Hello, it's the middle of the work week. Um, these are our devotions for today. I'm Pastor David Shub at Trinity Lutheran Church in West Bend, and we continue our look at the Beatitudes in the Gospel of Matthew. We now look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 5, where it says, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. For some strange reason, we think of meek as weak. I don't know if it's because they rhyme or whatever. But the word Jesus used here for meek is a Greek term that describes the breaking of a powerful stallion, wrote Greg Laurie for Harvest Daily Devotions. In the same way, when we surrender ourselves to God's will, we will exhibit meekness. Now, a stallion is not weak. That's a powerful creature, but it recognizes who is in charge. So here we can think of meekness as not so much an attitude toward people, but rather a disposition before God, namely, humility. Again, Eugene Peterson has an interesting understanding of this in his translation, The Message. There we find you're blessed when you're content with just who you are. No more, no less. That's the moment you find yourself proud owner of everything, that can't be bought. Do we recognize that we are not the center of the universe? Do we recognize that we are not totally independent, but we are interdependent with one another? Do we recognize that we as individuals and even a nation are powerful, each in our own way, but we are only effective as we allow something larger or, as Christians, someone greater to be the one who directs us. Without that wider perspective that comes as a child of God, we turn our power inward, and we can find that no matter how much we gain, how much we acquire, how much power we have, no matter how much we claim for ourselves, we are never satisfied. We never really have anything. I fear that our president doesn't understand the concept of meekness, and I fear most of those who run our country don't understand that. John Robert McFarlane, in his book on living with cancer, wrote, Lee Atwater was a a mean guitarist and a mean campaign manager for the first George Bush. He believed in destroying the political opposition in any way possible, not just in beating them, but in obliterating them. He took great pride in being nasty. He was only 40 when he died of a malignant brain tumor. Before his death, he wrote these words. I acquired more wealth and power and prestige than most, but you can acquire all you want and still feel empty. It took a deadly illness to put me eye to eye with that truth, but it is a truth that the country, caught up in its ruthless ambition and moral decay, can learn on my dime. I don't know who will lead us through the 90s, that's when this was written, and now we would say through this decade, because we still haven't got it, but they must be made to speak to the spiritual vacuum at the heart of American society, this tumor of the soul. McFarland goes on to write, Lee Atwater died. Yes, there's no cure for his body, but there was healing for his spirit. His conversion to peace from power, to love from greed, to hope from cynicism, was a great, greater miracle than a thousand cures. The miracle is always in the healing. If the healing also brings about a cure, let us rejoice and be glad. The miracle, however, is in the love. In finding meekness before God, in finding a certain humility before the miracle of life and love, Lee Atwater died having it all, something he'd never had before. You're blessed when you're content with just who you are, no more, no less. That's the moment you find yourself proud owner of everything, that can't be bought. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are we when we understand our place 
in the world of God. And we rejoice in it. Let us pray. Bless us, Lord, with the knowledge of our own power and our own limitations. And help us to live in meekness before you. Direct our power and life to the service of your love. Amen. May you find satisfaction and joy wherever you are in life. For that truly is what it means to be meek. Have a wonderful day.